This is the final version of a mathematical card trick I started working on earlier in the year. Now, in the previous version, it made use of a mathematical invariant that didn't allow the cards to be shuffled as much as, as I would like. And so, in this version, it makes use of something even simpler in mathematical theory and does allow a lot more freedom to shuffle. Now, as before, it consists of 11 cards with emoji symbols on the back. On the other side, you have these symbols. The same symbols as on the 11 cards arranged in a ring, as well as a ring of numbers. Now, you ask the spectator, volunteer, relative or student to pick one of these 11 cards. Let's say they pick this one. Figure out what emoji symbol they chose it isn't really too difficult because the backs of the cards, if you look closely, are actually all different. What might be more impressive is that the cards themselves can figure out which card was chosen. To do that, you ask the student, relative, volunteer or spectator to pick arbitrarily another five cards and turn them over. Let's say they turned over these, this, 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 this. It doesn't really matter. They can turn over any five. They can gather them up in any order that they want. They can shuffle feet, feet to cut this and shuffle. Gather these up together in any order. If they want, they can change their mind. Maybe they wanted this, this one to be flipped the other way and they actually wanted these turned over. Emoji side up. You can shuffle these up as well. They now have these two piles. This, with the symbols facing upwards, is the code pile. The ones with the five emoji is the data pile. We're going to, the cards are going to execute an algorithm executing the code <coughs> to process the data. Any computing system that is going to execute an algorithm needs to store intermediate results. And that's where the volunteer, participant, uh, student relative can take part by making use of the back of this card to store the intermediate results. Uh, to help that, they can give them a little token, initialize the computing system, the algorithm, by placing that token in the topmost circle next to the smiley face. Now we execute the algorithm. Step one, what does the data? The data is the apple. The instruction says advanced four steps clockwise. One, two, three, four. The next step and the next piece of data. Flower. Five steps. One, two, three, four, five. Next instruction, three steps. Next instruction, duck, nine. And the final instruction in our algorithm, eight steps. The algorithm has executed to completion and it has determined that this card is a green parachute. So to create these cards, draw a ring of 11 circles surrounded by the 11 emoji. Now the numbers that you place in that ring of circles are 0 to 10, counting in counterclockwise order. Now where you start the 0 must be different for each of the 11 cards so that no two cards have the same back. To determine what uh, emoji to place on the front, look for where the zero is and imagine there's a mirror right down the middle of the card 
and look for its reflection in that mirror what symbol is in that position and that's what you place on the opposite side of the card now so each of these positions where the zero is has an image there's one exception and that is the uh, smiley face and that is its own image so how does this trick work well in executing the algorithm the cards are just performing addition and addition has a number of properties that the cards on the backs of the cards and the emoji reproduce one of which is that addition is commutative doesn't matter if we add numbers a to b or b to a you get the same answer in this case the unicorn is a zero but if we add them the other way flower is a zero and it's the same for other cards as well flower is a one the duck is a one this is true of any pair of cards duck is a seven smiley face is a seven another property of addition that is also true of these cards is that addition is associative so if we were to add this pair together we get seven adding this pair we get three seven and three is ten but if we swap these around two eight eight plus two is also ten so, and so it doesn't really matter how you pair the cards off because in total you'll still get the same answer and third mathematical property that we're making use of is modulo arithmetic you don't have to keep track of the actual total you only need to keep track of the remainder when divided by 11 modulo arithmetic so provided the value given to each emoji has a different remainder when divided by 11 then when you're doing the summing up to find out which card is has been chosen and is missing from the total you just need to keep track uh, as you're adding up the remainder when divided by 11 and in adding up the modulo number it's the same as if we were summing up the numbers and finding the remainder afterwards.